host, Captain Pervert, and welcome to a James Bond special. So, what's special about it? We've got 10 James Bond lacquer-like cars in the garage. 10 of them. So, we've got the first one that's near enough from Dr. No, the DB5 from Goldfinger, and then the spy who loves me. Yeah. Then we've got Daniel Craig's No Time To Die, or maybe Living Daylight. Then we've got Octopussy. You can't say that. Shut up, Captain Gorgeous. To a TVR, some reason. I like Bondish. To the BMW from Tomorrow Never Dies. And then we've got two Austin Martins, you know, maybe Casino Royale. But we've got Dr. Nell's car and Goldfingers. So they're going to verse each other. But first, let's find out what the cars are about. So, we've got our insurance investigator to tell you a little bit more about the motor and enjoy the clip. I thought Mara would be more of a Bond girl today with it being this special. Oh, just get on with it, oh, what? All right. Well, Bond's first car wasn't actually um, the Aston Martin DB5, even though it's very oh, iconic. No, that's what Bentley. No, but everybody else does. Um, iconic of the franchise. Uh, but in Bond's first car was a pre-war Bentley Sunbeam Alpine 2 in lake blue finish. Still a well, British... Well, well, obviously you did know. You don't know who the Bond is. Not that is bad, but it's still a British manufactured car, which is a big tradition in the franchise. Just as important in popularity who plays Bond. So is the car. It's like the BMW in the 90s was a bad idea for hardcore fans and petrol heads. Yeah, it was, but we didn't mind that trace in the multi story. A multi story with a chase in it. Yeah, is that yeah. the one with the remote control? Yeah, where it's bound, yeah, and it sits in the box seat. Something stupid. Right, and then from 1961 to 1962, um. Is a six and a half litre Bentley V12 with multiple Grand Prix winner and one of the greatest pre war marquees. Um, and the Sunbeam name was 50 years old when World War II ended, but became well known again with Dr. No's 1962 Bond movie showing off Bond's driving skill alone to avoid the capture. Its generous size was based on a husky two door wagon, making it popular with Americans. With a 700 pound cargo capacity and due to being under 13 feet long, um, it would have been in the Grand Tour GT class otherwise. Not even the second movie from Russia with Bob in 1963, Bond Car, still wasn't Aston Martin yet. No, all it did was a yellow truck with flowers in it and dropping grenades on it. Right. Well, that stupid again. again, it was a, um, this time it was a Bentley. To take, um, it was used to, used as for Sylvia Trench um, on a date picnic. He used the convertible roof, well, to um, finish the date in private before going back to HQ for the movie's mission. Yeah, he's got found in the car now. Yeah. Yeah, that's how he found out to go back well, to HQ. Well, you make this trench in this movie when he goes. My name is Bond, James Bond. Who the hell's Bond? Well, he's meant to be a secret agent. A secret agent, and he's telling everyone his name. Yeah, he did it, could say now, just to chat the birds up. And she knew where she lived, and she was wearing a shirt playing golf in his, in his house. What, in the movie? Yeah. So stupid. Right, Captain Pervert, for someone like myself who hasn't watched the film in years, or for Captain Gorgeous who's never seen any of no, the I franchise. I haven't seen it, I don't even know what it's on about. Yeah, could you explain it, Captain Pervert, what it's about? Right, yeah, right. What the film's about is about a dragon on an island. And it's building up. But the thing is, though, it ain't really a dragon. It's a tractor with a flamethrower on it. It's so stupid. Now, it gets better. You see a woman called Elsa the Anderson, called nicknamed Annie. Right? She's world famous coming out of the seaside. Doing a musical because it's a it's only a Bond movie. What's a musical? 
a musical. Yeah, James Bond sings to her. That sing, you know, and the coconuts. I mean, it's famous for three blind mice. I mean, this is what the clips are about. I mean, there's three blind men chasing Bond, driving a hearse. What? Three blind men are driving a hearse, chasing James Bond, this guy? Yeah, they're trying to shoot him, right? But, you know... Well, they're not going to shoot him, because he can't see, can they? No! I mean, I mean, they've got most extra senses, haven't they? That's how it started up with this movie. You're not mixing it up with Daredevil, are you? No, no! They killed that woman down there who was on that radio! And, you know, like, something's been cut off from the internet and all that, like, like Facebook and something. And so the MI6 have got to investigate, so they said, Bond out there! Okay, there's no radio communications! And then there's a mysterious of, uh, Doctor Know-It-All! What sends a killer tarantula onto him in his bed? What, a spider? Yeah! So the spider's blind men in it driving hearses and dragons, what attracts Yeah, and there's radiation, because when you finally get to see the movie, and you don't see Elsa, Elsa Anderson naked in the shower, because I checked, alright? But, point is, right, this geezer's got no hands! Set metal ones, and that's how Bond gets rid of it because he can't climb up radiation cranes or whatever. Bet rubbish fight, like, but. So he's saying it's rubbish? No, it's good, right? I mean, it's loads of expense in it, right? I mean, loads. But on this scene, right? I mean, it, 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 it rented. I mean, this car actually was actually rented. They did buy the car, they rent the car, and then, then they used it in the movie. So, they were a bit skint then? Yeah, oh, they must have been. They, they had to rent it, that's why they abused it for and all that. Well, lot. yeah, because it was the first movie. Well, yeah, yeah, but it did well, didn't it? You know, first woman to see in a bikini. You see women in bikinis all the time in movies. Yeah, but they were the first time it was in the 60s, like in 62 or something. Right, it was. Yeah, well the thing is, Dal. Yeah. So what's the story about? Oh, something about radio, uh, radio things in the theory with the Americans uh, launching of a rocket and something. And Bond goes over there and sorts him out because he's a British secret agent. So, it's something to do with the Americans, but they send a British agent over there. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, they got to, yeah! They need Bond, because he's James Bond! And what's so special about him? Well, I keep telling her all the ladies his name and they all jump in bed with him and all that, look. That's how he gets off with that honey ride there and all that, look. But she's suspicious there, right? Because we found out she killed her uncle in a sleep or something. Uh, this sounds weird. No, it's not weird, it's Bond, isn't it? You know I mean? So you got blind men driving a car? Yeah. And then what happens? Well, obviously Bond's gonna outdrive them, isn't he? Well, obviously, they can't see where they're going, can they? Well, you, yeah, I don't think of that, but yeah, I suppose it's there, yeah. So what's the big climate ending of it? Well, like typical 60s style, like, they'll drive off a cliff, won't they? Well, yeah, they'll drive off a cliff because they can't see it coming, can they? Well, yeah, that's why they might crash. And it blows up and everything and stuff. Well, right, okay. So yeah. what else in this movie, then? Why is it so popular, this guy? Well, they made a few more films about him. That's why. I mean, it was this famous uh, author called Ian Fleming. What I imagine he wanted to be like a secret agent, but he won. I mean, yeah, you know, but he wrote loads of facts about it. Because it's about uh, like a bloke what he used to go bed watching, and he wanted a common name. So he put James Bond out of this back. Right, this does sound so confusing. Yeah, because he wanted the guy to have a really boring name, um, but it... Yeah, and everyone now... knows it. Well, I don't know it. Yeah, James Bond. Yeah, Bond. Right, secret agent. So this is coming up now, right up to that clip where 
The bad guys can't see where they're going and drive off a cliff. Oh, right, how original is that then? Well, it's not bad. I mean, go to talk to ages before it gets down to the bottom and then it blows up in midair. Right, okay. So you got dragons who are tractors or driving tractors and that. No, they're not driving tractors. They think the tractor is a dragon. What? This movie sounds stupid. Yeah, but you've got to explain who thinks the um, tractor's a dragon. Oh, it's a man called Coral and Honey. They think that it's a dragon, but Bomb's not fooled because he knows it's a tractor tracks. And he shoots at it, shoots the lights at it. Now for the one and only, the legend. Yeah, for every petrol head, this what made Bond, the gadget car. Also known as the Aston Martin DB5, it was in Goldfinger in 1964 on Thunderball 1965, Tomorrow Never Dies, Casino Royale and Skyfall. But it's remembered as the ultimate Bond car due to its gadgets like tyre slashers, ejection seat, machine guns and many other smaller gadgets. The DB5 is a British luxury GT Grand Tourer made by Aston Martin. Designed by the Italian coach builder mentioned in previous Best Automatic videos, but if you forgot or need to watch the back catalogue of episode, it was Corazero Touring Superlegare. It has 282 horsepower, 550,000 RPM, 280 pounds of torque, and weighs 1.52 kilos with a top speed of 145 miles per hour, very impressive for the 60s. It was available in the two-door coupe, two-door convertible and two-door shooting brake, a standard, came with reclining seats, wool pile carpets, electric windows, twin fuel tanks, chrome wire wheels, oil cooler, magnesium alloy body built for Superligra patent technique, full leather trim and fire extinguisher. Maybe the fire extinguisher was added due to the fictional gadgets because the ejection seat would burn the passenger in it and the driver. Although even Fleming had placed Bond in a DB Mark III in the novel, Steers persuaded the company to make its DB5 prototype available, so a car for a hardcore Ian Fleming fans for those who prefer the novels to the films. Um, they too, the DB5 fives, were showcased at the 1964 New York World Fair and called the most famous car in the world, and still is today, but it's returned in recent Daniel Craig movies, but I'll go more into detail that shortly. However, Sean Connolly only drove the DB2161-1 car. The other two cars were built for the production company as promotional cars that was taken over the world to promote the two movies. This road car, DB4, was modified to, cr to create the DB5 prototype. To be like the Ian Fleming's fictional car, which now they made exist. In 1968, Aston Martin still owned the vehicle, but decided to strip it of all its gadgets and sold it to Gavin Kaiser, as and used the car displaying 50,000 miles on the ontrometer and re-registered with license plate 6633 PA. A year later, Kaiser. Ha had an English company reinstall all the gadgets to capitalise on the car's history, which I think was a wise move. In 1971, Kaiser sold the DB2161-1 to Richard Luce of Utah, where it had a brief appearance in the Cannonball Room movie. And then Luce retired in 1987, so he decided to sell his two pride and joys. One was the DB5 and a 1937 Rolls-Royce Phantom III used in Goldfinger. Anthony Bugis from Florida purchased the Iconic DB5 for $2,705. Grundy Insurance um, in 2006 had put a value of $4 million on this car and it was insured for 80% value at $3.2 million. But it was famously stolen from an aircraft hangar in Boca Raton, Florida. Despite the suspicious circumstances of the theft, Grundy Underwriter had no choice but to pay the claim. And the fact that the car still hasn't been seen today is a horrible sign that the movie icon is more than likely has been destroyed. The second one did however still belong to Aston Martin, so was using Goldfung Goldfinger and Thunderbolt. But that bad luck struck again. Jerry Lee purchased it in 1968 
who wasn't happy that Aston had removed the gadget and sold it to him for $12,000 and on collection said it looked dismal at best, well grim at best. So Aston Martin had to fix that before Lee took it back to the States where the DB5 1486R were displayed in shows but at a show in Memphis, Tennessee was damaged. Furious he vowed that it would never be displayed for public to the public again. However, in 1977, finally some luck, the chairman of Aston Martin USA asked Lee if he would allow the car to be displayed at New York's car show. Lee only broke his vow when Aston paid for all the gadgets to be reinstalled and was displayed one more time in 1981. After the show, the DB5 lived in a special wing of Lee's mansion and was never seen by the public again. However, Jerry Lee decided to sell it so the proceeds of the sale would go into his foundation which supported Education International Anti-Crime Projects, a nice 4.6 million fund on 10th of October 2010. When Harry Yeager, a famous classic car collector from Shinati, Ohio, where he still owns it and displays at events around the state. This is the only surviving DB5 of the two cars actually used in the filming of the movies. Both cost Eon Production a shocking $62,000 each back in the 60s when an original DB5 cost $11,250, a lot for a display purposes. Both display cars were sold to Lord Bamford in 1969 for only 3750 each, a complete bargain. Also Lord Bamford made another great deal with his friend Sandy White, who was desperate to have one of the display cars, so he traded for one of White's 1964 Ferrari 250 GTO, but that Ferrari is now worth 40 million today. After four months of White playing and getting bored of his DB5, if you can imagine such a thing, sold it for only 21600 and an all-expenses trip on the QE2 to New York. And then once upon its delivery, got another two weeks holiday, all expenses paid on the US West Coast, where, sp where it spent 13 years displayed outside Baker's Attic Restaurant in Vancouver but in the 80s Baker was financially struggling and sold it to Alf Spencer for 7000 Spence had it fully restored hoping to get 165000 but only got 80000 from Bob Torrent, a race car driver who also sold it one year later to Robert Pass of Pass Transportation. Again, maybe bored of it and sold it just five months later to Robert Lippmann, who also disappointed it wasn't in the movie and worse, not driven by Sean Connery, the whole reason why he bought it. So for this end, um, it, it just ended up in a Jaguar dealership like any normal car. The dealership, however, went bust, so the DB5 disappeared from any paper records for some time, but it did resurface again in Lohman, um in a collection in an automobile museum in Randonkservier, Holland. Maybe this created a great YouTuber inspiration for Dutch boy Bond fan channel, I recommend you check out and it's still there today despite rumours of it being the original gadget car in an auction in 2010 but it wasn't that one, it's still there. However Lord Bamford still owning one of the display DB5s decided to have a lot of fun with driving it around after the famous theft of the original gadget DB5. The press and the police were not as amused as him. In 1971, Bamford sold the car to the famous collector Bruce Ashley, who owned Smoky Mountains Car Museum in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, Ashley, for his son, Hugh, who displayed it from 1971 to 2006. It was then auctioned off in 2006 to Biltmore Hotel in Phoenix, Arizona, to be driven into a darkened ballroom by Terry Lobsom of RM Machine Guns at a cost of 2.4 million. After this stunt, it went for a full restoration at the Switzerland, taking four years from 2006 to 2013 by Ruse Engineering, one of 13 Aston Martin's heritage specialists, now estimated between four to six million in value. Not originals, but replicas were used in GoldenEye, Casino Royale and Skyfall for a total of 13 minutes of footage. 
This is still skimming over the subject of the most famous car in the world, so if you want to know more, there's books like the Dave Worrell one, YouTube videos and many sites dedicated to the classic movies and cars, but would be biased to get the info on YouTube as, as the book on the DB5 costs £250-£300 to in itself. Replicas still impressive as they were made and owned by the UK royalty. So, this car's might be famous, but it's not that famous. Like Knight Rider. Whoa, whoa, wait on! That Knight Rider wouldn't exist in here, what, for the Austin Martin Bond's car? Yeah, the original, um, Gabby no, car. No, it won't! I'm the Knight Rider's better than that. I've never read this Only because it's an 80s car and it had all the digital functions, but without the DB5, that concept would never exist and you wouldn't have got Knight Rider. Yeah, I mean, this is what made Bond, like I said. Oh, this is what inspired Rockstar to put it in the game, innit? Because it's that so popular. I mean, the royalty and uh, everything of the royal family. I mean, they made yeah. it for Prince Andrew. Well, mean, they made it for Prince Andrew, didn't they? But everyone keeps yeah, everyone thinks Prince it's Charles, Charles didn't it? Wasn't it? it was Andrew. Yeah. Which is quite embarrassing right so now. So what? They made a toy car? They made loads of toy cars, but yeah, they made a toy car for it, you know. Yeah, Bond had quite a good, um, um what do they call what? it? They like with the little toys? They mean they made a car what's got machine guns in? No! For the royal family? Like the toys. Well, yeah, but Merch they weren't real. Oh, sorry, I forgot the word merchandise. Um, it did really well with merchandise. That's your fault for buying her up when she did all that good speaking. No, it's not my fault I don't know what this film's about. Well, this is a third one, right? What happened to the second one? Well, there's not much that happens in it, right? Well, there is, but there's no car chases in it. But this one's got a car chase. It's the first one with the gadgets in it, right? So what happens? Right, you can imagine, right? This bad guy's chasing him, right? And this bloke here wrote it, you know, Ian Fleming. But not like the bomber juices did, they well, went well over the top with it, as she said, yeah? You know, it's got gadgets, right? And Goldfinger's goons are going after him, right? Who's that? Oh, there! Oh, right, right. Bond slaps her on the bottom and says, Man's talk. Don't I? Yeah. He does it. You can tell it's sort of the old ones have aged because it's quite sexist. Like he would say things like, "Oh, you swim like a man." Oh, that's Thunderbolt, but there's not much car chasing. But the Aston Martin's in there where it squirts water, doesn't it? And it puts a jetpack in it, in the boot, and and there's a mountain bike what saves him when I mean, he's being pursued by a bug guy. But in this one, right, he gets pursued by bug guys, right? And he's lets off the smoke and one crashes into a tree and it don't blow up. And then he sprays oil at it and one goes up a cliff and blows up. And then he goes into Goldfinger's compound. And then what happens? Well, well the thing is, there's this guy, odd job, and he pulled over and he got his flector shield out, right? Because, why is he called odd job? Well, the car's that famous, it, it, it had adverts and all that lot, but yeah, odd job does odd jobs, right? I mean, the thing is though, right. But the really odd jobs. Yeah, like squashing golf balls and cutting statues' heads off with his um, hat. What? With his hat, he cuts statues' heads off with, with his hat. Yeah, with his ball hat. With his yeah, yeah, ball hat, yeah. But when he throws it at a human, a red don't come off, does it? No, he does something wrong then, doesn't he? Well, yeah, Master Dan, but he killed a dog, didn't it? So there's a bloke throwing a hat about, and it kills yeah, people. Yeah, a deadly hat. Yeah, and he squashes brand new cars, and he paints ladies all in gold, all naked and that. Yeah, so he can suffocate them. We're on. So he's killing people with hats and painting them gold. Yes. It sounds stupid. Now you got gadget gas. You didn't have the complicated story in that in Night Rider. Yeah, well, Night Rider's a babyish, isn't it? I mean, that is Bond. I mean, it was. I mean, the point is, right, what I'm getting at with the car chases, 
Right. Bond stops. Girl gets killed. Right. Then sort of like pat him in his mouth. Like, let him drive it. And put a bad guy in the car. And he's got a surprise for him. What's that? Like she said, an ejector seat. Why would he have an ejector seat in the car for? You can get rid of your passenger. Why? Why not? This don't make sense. Yeah, well, he, he, he's, uh, uh, he, he uses it and he, he blows his dummy out uh, back a bit, right? And then he goes driving a bit and then crashes because he sees his own reflection, doesn't he, in the mirror? Exactly. And I think um, an ejection seat would be like um, the so ideal this, car this, for an Uber car, driver. This car's so hyper and all well known yes. and famous. You've been living but the under guy the rock. crashed it. Yeah. What, because of a mirror, you said? Well, yeah, he saw his own reflection. Yeah, it was a mirror, yeah. Yeah, it does look yeah, like Yeah, it was a mirror, yeah. yeah he looks... saw his own headlights and he crashed in the building, didn't he? I thought he was quite... Because Bond was quite vain. I thought he was staring at himself. I was staring at himself doing his hair and all that lot. Yeah. Well, you're a bit of a wally, aren't you? A band he got tied down and they put a laser in there and some happy sacks, didn't they? Yeah, he nearly paid for that. And they chop him off and the gold pink comes out. Nope. He goes, you're, uh, Bond goes, you expect me to talk? And, and, and the German guy goes, No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die! Yeah, do you what does so that lowly? mean? It's so stupid, this film. But yeah, that's one of the best villains in the franchise. The best villain? And what's so special about him? Well, he's called Goldfinger. Why? I don't know, why did he call Goldfinger? I don't see him have a Goldfinger, did we? No! Alright, but well, yeah, he likes gold, right? That's colour of it, he said to Mr. Bond, right? And um, he's gonna blow up Fort Knox in America. Why is he blowing the biggest, highest bank in America for? So he makes his gold more expensive and nobody won't touch his gold. Was it an atomic bomb or something? Yeah, it was for the radiation so nobody could touch it for thousands of years. So, so his he's gold be would go gold in... radioactive? Yes. Right. And then... And he's got a bloke called Dom Job what paints ladies in gold. No, gold paint, not actual gold. Well, we don't know that because he had gold, didn't he? He might have melted some gold and painted it on it. That'd be very expensive, why not just yeah, strangle it? Yeah, but he's, he's Goldfinger, it doesn't matter. I mean, he's got a Rolls Royce and he smuggles gold yeah, but, with the air. Yeah, but if that doesn't matter... Because he makes him. his car out of gold, doesn't he? He bits of gold out of it and smuggles it into other countries and that. Yeah, but... He sounds stupid. Yeah, and he's got a lesbian what works with him, but we, they don't actually say she's a lesbian in it, right? And her name's called Pussy. She what? can actually hint on the jet, isn't it, that she... Oh, yeah, she says in. she's a pilot, yeah. So, Wimmy can be a pilot. Well, now, in six days, you might hear a really big call, you know. You had to be a lesbian to fly a plane or something, wasn't it? Yeah, it was That's very sexist in them days. Yeah, but Bond sorts her out, like, he gets in there, oh, like, in a high stack, and he pins her down. Pins her down, that's... Rips her. What? It ra there's raping in it? I thought you said he'll fit to get the coal. Yeah, he does get to the ladies. What? By raping? Yeah, because... How old do you have to be to watch this film? PG! My mum won't let me watch it because she's very guided. Yeah, but can't she watch it and then let you watch it? Well, she's not going to let me watch it. It sounds like a load of twaddle. No, it's not. It's blading gun. It's... Goldfinger, it's the one what's got everybody inspired a bet playing GTA and all that look and you buy this car twice yeah well we got the cheaper version yeah it's a shame oh but oh this car had other gadgets in it now but well, never showed in the film what the sat nav and shelves under the seats and the phones well, yeah, the well you get show. that now in cars what? yeah but well, it sounds that old man, stupid, Jeff, this no. car with silly stuff. Never mind there, we're on to the speed challenge. I'm definitely my mouth at what I'm rooting for. The one you're making a big deal about, what I don't know about. Yeah, they, you know, the DB5, yeah, it's the 
blast it! Everyone shut now! No, but I also like the sunbeam one, so I tell you what, I'll I'll yeah, vouch that for that isn't one. Politically correct, is it? Am I what what do you mean it's not politically correct? Well, you, I mean, it isn't, is it? Am I just going to get a bit more like a viper, a, 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 a cobra? That's what it looks like in reality. Yeah, because we've got to base it on different parts of cars. Yeah, well, it looks stupid because it's a 90s because I don't know anything about this character and this car at all. Well, no. Well, you need to brass up, aren't you? If you're doing a car you need, proud, Yeah, you need to you? watch them. Right, then, why? It looks rubbish. Don't you start dissing James Bond's car. It's a classic. In fact, you're probably one of the few people in the world what can actually do um, a review on it because you've never seen it before. Me do a review on that old banger, boy. Well, Why? No, no, I'm thinking no, the you movie. Can in Bond's car. Everyone knows that car. All right. Well, it's not doing very well, is it? No. Because I'm Dr. Know-It-All's car set off first, didn't it? That's why. It's Dr. No, not Dr. Know-It-All. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's Dr. No. Why is he called No? Because you don't know like, no for an answer. Might be. I don't know. Oh, what the hell's happened? Hey, the sunbeam. No, what? No, oh, what, what? Oh, bleeding it. Oh, dear. So, bleeding it. On that disappointment, it's time to end the show.